Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make a scrunch gravity dye. The setup that I'm going to use for this is I have two plastic sawhorses and in between the two sawhorses I place two long pieces of vinyl guttering. I have them turned upside down with the flat side up and then I've placed a metal wire rack over the top of the two pieces of vinyl guttering. Then I'm going to take a shirt, put the top of the shirt on top of the rack, and I'm going to scrunch the top portion of the shirt. To hold some of the shirt on top of the rack where it doesn't slide off, I'm going to push a few of the pieces of the fabric through the holes in the metal rack. Then to catch any of the runoff from the melting ice and dye, I've placed a plastic container underneath the sawhorses. Also to keep the ice on the shirt, I'm going to use some of the silicone cake molds that I normally use when I ice dye, and I'm going to hold them up next to the shirt using some wooden clothes pins. I have links down below in the description for this video for where I purchased the silicone cake molds. The nice thing about the setup that I'm using right now is on the other end of the vinyl guttering, I have another shirt going at the same time. I've actually already made the video for that one and I have it posted. It's for a side scrunch shirt and it turned out really cool. If you haven't checked that one out, I'll leave a link down below in the description for this video to the side scrunch video because the color splits in that one were really cool. For this shirt, I'm going to go ahead and just add the dye directly on top of the shirt. Some of the gravity dyes that I do, I prefer to add a little bit of ice and then add the dye on top. But since this is a scrunched portion, I'm going to do it a little different and I'm just going to go ahead and add the dye directly to the shirt. One reason why I've been adding a little bit of ice down on some of the gravity dyes before I apply the dye is to avoid getting some of the little darker areas on the shirt from where the dye was applied. When it goes over the top of the ice, it has a tendency to get watered down a little bit or soften before it actually touches the fabric. So it doesn't leave as large of a mark or as dark of a mark on the shirt. But because I'm doing a scrunch area on this shirt, I don't care if there's some darker areas and some lighter areas. So for this shirt, I'm using Stormy Sky from Pro Chemical and Dye, Huckleberry from Dye Spin, New Black from Dharma Trading Company, and Indigo Blue from Dharma. I'm going to randomly apply those four colors to the scrunch portion of the shirt. I'm also trying to make sure I get a little bit of each one of those colors right up next to the edge of the rack. I want each of the colors to be able to wick or flow down the shirt. So I want to get them up close to the edge. Now I'm going to add a fairly generous portion of soda ash over the top. I'm going to add a lot of ice to this shirt. So I want to make sure I still have plenty of soda ash remaining in the shirt after all this liquid from the ice flows through the shirt. The dye has to have the soda ash to bond properly with the fabric so I don't want it to all get rinsed out. Then I'm going to place a big chunk of ice, which I made in an old Cool Whip container, and a few smaller pieces of ice to fill in the extra space. Because this chunk of ice is pretty large, it's going to take it a little bit to melt. Even though it's over 100 degrees today, it will still be a little bit slower melt than if I just added regular ice to the top. I want all of the dye to travel down the shirt to the very edges of the fabric. So after this ice melted, there was still a little bit on one side of the shirt that the dye hadn't really gone down to that area. So I added a little bit more dye, just kind of randomly chose colors, put them in that area, and added some more ice to the top to try to force some more liquid through the shirt and force that dye down to the very outer corner. 
I went ahead and left the shirt for about 12 to 15 hours. The shirt fully dried out, but I left it long enough in a hot enough environment that the dye had plenty of time and plenty of heat to bond properly with the fabric. I took the shirt to my utility sink and I started rinsing it in cold water like normal. The cold water rinse is to rinse out the soda ash that's in the shirt. Then I warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I continued rinsing until the water was running almost clear. Then I put the shirt along with some Dharma's Professional Textile Detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. So the shirt has been washed and dried and here's what it looks like. Okay, so what do you think? I think this one looks really cool. I'm a little bummed that I didn't get the dye all the way to the edge at that one corner. I've learned since then that I can kind of make it work by pouring just a little bit of warm water in that area and that'll help keep the dye flowing in that area. Like I said, it's really hot here right now and the shirts I'm struggling to have them not dry out before the dye has plenty of time to move where I want it to. I did come back and spray it a couple of times with a soda ash solution just to try to keep it semi damp and try to keep that dye moving a little bit. But overall I'm really happy with the shirt. I'm a little bit surprised that the more burgundyish colors went straight down the middle and the blues went over to the side. I think that's kind of odd. I've added a couple of close-ups so that you can see kind of how the dye moved and what's going on with the dye up close. It's been a long time since I've ice dyed with new black and I think kind of that brownish color may be coming from the new black, potentially a little bit of that green hue that I see in the shirt. And I do like the color variation up top. I like the fact that there are some darker spots, some lighter spots. So I think it looks really nice adding the dye directly to the shirt. Like I said, some of the designs, I don't really like those darker spots, but on this one, I think it looks really good because I wanted that area to be a little bit different. So I think it looks cool. So overall, I'm really happy with this shirt. Of course, I love the dye movement and I think the colors work great together. But what do you guys think? Drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you guys have enjoyed watching me make this shirt, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.